I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Bryant Advantage Cisco training video. Today we're going to take a look at ping for both the CCNA and CCNP exams. And you may think, well, you know, how complicated is ping? Well, the regular ping that we use most of the time in networking and troubleshooting is not particularly complicated, but there are some basics we need to know for the CCNA exam. For real-world troubleshooting and for your CCNP studies, you do want to know your way around an extended ping. So frankly, this is a skill and something that everyone, regardless of which certification they're going after, should be aware of. Let's start by just reviewing a regular ping. And I'm going to send one over to 172.23.23.2. This is a segment that routers 2 and 3 share, and their router number is the last octet. So when I send a ping, We've all seen this before, there's no problem with it, or nothing unexpected. Type escape sequence to abort, we always see that. Uh, you will notice that there's nothing after that, which is a little odd. It doesn't tell us what the escape sequence is. We're sending five 100-byte ICMP echoes over to the address we specified. Timeout is two seconds, that's the default, and then we see five exclamation points. We're always happy to see those because that means that our success rate is indeed 100%. Let's go over to router 2 and we'll send a ping back to 172.23.23.3. Goes right over, we see the same thing. So this is what we expect to see in a ping and it's probably the first kind of ping that any of us send on a Cisco router. But there may be times where you want to send more than five pings. There may be times where you want to change the size of the echo packets. And you may actually want to change the source interface. Well, we can do that with what we call an extended ping. And the one thing to keep in mind, or the first thing to keep in mind really, about an extended ping is that you cannot send it from user exec mode, which is where I am right now. You've got to send it from, from privileged exec mode or enable mode. If we try to just use the ping command, which is the command we use for an extended ping, and then hit enter, we're going to message that says incomplete command. So when you see that, when you type ping in, you know you're in the wrong mode. When I enter the ping command from enable mode, you'll notice that I'm going to be prompted with a series of questions. And remember, when you're working on a Cisco device and you're prompted with an answer, in the brackets and there's only one, that is the default answer. So you don't have to type IP here to send IP packets. Let's see, uh, protocol, target IP address, obviously it can't be a default for that. 172.23.23.3. Let's say we want to send 25 pings, so we'll put in 25 there. We'll keep the size the same, timeout the same. Now extended commands, this is a little advanced and you may go a long time without ever using these, but in a lab environment we always want to take a look around. So let's say yes to this. It's going to ask us what the source address or interface is. And by default, the source for the pings is going to be the interface of the, inter uh, excuse me, the address of the interface through which those ping packets exit. Uh, you can change this. Again, it's more something you probably do in IE labs or in, uh, in more advanced troubleshooting, but you can change that. If you hit enter, it's going to keep the default. Type of service will keep it zero. Do we want to set the don't fragment bit in the IP header? We'll keep the default there. Do we want validation of the reply data? No. Data pattern we'll leave alone. Sweep range of sizes, we're going to keep no to that. And you'll notice they went out very quickly because as soon as I answered no to that particular question, out they went. And we sent 25 echoes, and again, the type escape sequence to abort line is there, but it doesn't tell us anything. Well, in more advanced troubleshooting scenarios, what you may end up doing is sending a ping stream to test connectivity while you're making configuration changes also as you advance in your Cisco routing studies, and this may be something you want to do you know, when you're working on the NA as well. Let's say that you're testing something or you're working with a protocol and you don't want to have to stop every time you change something and then say, okay, now I'll send five pings and see if it works. You can send a stream of pings and be working on it at the same time through another connection. So there will be times sooner or later, either in a home lab 
or in a production environment when you're going to want to send a stream of pings instead of sending five at a time. This extended ping is how you do it. But what I also want to show you is how to terminate a ping because you'll notice that for both the extended and regular pings it said type escape sequence to abort. And it's really a little embarrassing when you send a ping out and say three people are behind you of course and you send a ping and it doesn't work and you're just waiting for all five pings. Let's say that I try to ping an address right now on this router that can't be pinged. And we've all been here, you know, and you're just uh, waiting for all five packets to time out. It only takes 10 seconds, but it seems like it takes 10 minutes. And let's say that if you send 100 pings, let's do that. We'll keep, uh, we'll ping the same non-existent address. And let's say you send 100 pings and you keep all these timeouts. And you know what you're going to get here? You're going to get 100 timeouts. And it's really embarrassing. You know, it's time wasting and a little embarrassing. So you want to know how to terminate this, not just for exams, but for the real world. And let me show you how to do that. Did you see what I did? Of course you didn't, because it's a video and you're seeing the screen. You can't see my hands. What I did was use Control Shift 6 twice, once right after the other. So again, that termination for pings is Control Shift 6, Control Shift 6. You just do it once right after the other, and when you do that, it'll terminate a ping, and it will also terminate a trace route, because a trace route can do the same thing. It'll start timing out in the middle, and it's going to give you like 30 rows of asterisks, and you don't want to look at all of them. So you need to know how to terminate those. And again, that is Control Shift 6, Control Shift 6. I want to thank you for watching today's video and invite you out to the website www.thebryantadvantage.com. I've got over 250 free Cisco tutorials now. We've got videos, fully illustrated tutorials, and practice exams for you. And also I post daily practice, practice exam questions on the blog as well. So again, I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.